Hi everyone, welcome to uh, the screencast on interpretivism and suicide. Learn and focus is to look at the interpretive explanation of suicide, who are the main theorists and uh, what their views, and do they differ to take time in the positive theories that we looked at last week. And finally, obviously, what conclusions can we draw from them all? So the interpretive view is um, different to the positivist view and uh, they kind of seek to rip apart the theories of, of Durkheim and the other positives and they wish to focus more on the actual meaning of suicide for those involved um, rather than um, finding out why uh, suicide has occurred um, in terms of a statistical data analysis. So, um, Douglas is a, a key um, theorist when it comes to interpretivism, and what uh, Douglas wants to look at is the, the meaning of suicide to the deceased, to the person who it actually happens to, and um, the idea that we um, label deaths as suicide and the objectivity, uh, etc., that is in, involved in, in doing so. Um, two major criticisms of Durkheim from Douglas or that the use of statistics so um, first of all questions that are all statistics actually recorded there could be a bias in how the verdict of the suicides reached so the coroner might have some sort of bias in terms of their idea about what a suicide is how it happens how it should happen etc um, also there's a um, an idea that if they're fully integrated into um, society then the victim would have friends and family and these might not support the idea of that a suicide has happened they may want to protect um, the deceased from any kind of disrespect um, embarrassment to the family and friends etc so they may not actually be reported as suicide and also if they were isolated as Durkheim suggested then there would there would be no opposition to a suicidal verdict so if this bias that um, Douglas is talking about is correct and a suicidal verdict is put forward and there's no one there to actually oppose it in any way whatsoever so, Dirk, uh, so Douglas uh, comes to the conclusion that um, you know, integration actually affects the labelling of suicide rather than actual suicide occurring. It's about how suicide is labelled by those around um, the deceased as being suicidal. And Douglas obviously also believes that these um, interactions and negotiations between those involved actually impact on whether or not the decision is made. Again, if there's no opposition, etc., then any decision about um, suicide can be made without any opposition. The second criticism that Douglas has of Durkheim is the idea of the meaning to the person who acts out this um, suicide and also um, qualitative data uh, that comes out through it. Um, Durkheim seems to ignore in the eyes of um, Douglas the, the meaning of the act. So there's this assumption with Durkheim's um, four types of suicide that there's n it, it's fixed and it's constant meaning as we discussed when, it when we were discussing uh, Durkheim and uh, positivists um, it's quite difficult to actually categorise a certain act as a certain type of um, suicide and you know although you know say for instance the Wall Street crash led to suicides um, because of um, fear embarrassment poverty and things like that the actual act of suicide is different for everyone, even though the times are the same. Douglas believes we need to contextualise and understand cultural meanings of suicide to actually understand why people commit it. Um, Durkheim's study faces problems in that he looks for um, patterns between cultures and within cultures, where Douglas believes that it's the person's position within society and how they view themselves within society. You know, very similar to the integration viewpoint, but also how society is actually, what society is like at that time and in that place. Um, so the suicidal meanings go well beyond um, the, the, the four types um, offered by Durkheim in that the, and there's also issues with the quantitative data in that um, the way that you, you get the data in terms of suicide could be easily um, you know, manipulated or incorrect. Douglas believes that we need to actually study types of suicide through qualitative data and through research and um, 
through this, um, Douglas suggests and has found that the, um, there are different reasons for suicide and those incl include um, escapism, um, repentance for some sort of uh, bad act or a sin, um, through sympathy, um, through self-punishment, again for doing something which uh, maybe goes against the norms, or, uh, your own norms or society's norms, and also the idea of uh, revenge suicide as well. Douglas says that these also have specific cultural um, types of suicide as well. So there could be transformation of the soul. So the idea of actually getting into heaven um, for sacrificing oneself. Um, possible issue here, though, is that you know Douglas is saying that he's you know he, he suggests and he's found that these are the types of suicide, but he actually didn't carry out any case studies himself. So there could be an issue there with validity um, and. Uh, an evaluation point there. Other criticisms of Douglas uh, could be that he talks about interpreting the meanings of victims and that um, corridors may be subjective and have their own opinion and it's all down to interpretation and label. Well actually Douglas in um, putting forward his reasons for suicide as seen on the previous slide is also interpreting and it's his opinion, his subjective uh, view. So he's no real you know, who's to say sociologists are any better than actual coroners? Sainsbury's and Barraclough um, look at the idea that Douglas puts forward about um, labelling and uh, interpretation from coroners. Um, they found that there was actual real differences in groups of people in suicide, and they did this by looking at a group of uh, people in a group of immigrants in the USA and they had very similar ranking of suicide so numbers of suicide per you know ethnic group for instance as those who were in their country of origin so there was a very it wasn't about where you lived or anything like that so the idea that um, coroners have some sort of subjectivity and labeling um, suicide doesn't really hold true because you know they could be from completely different parts of the world with different norms different ideas about suicide yet it still ranks around about the same so these suggest that um, those who are involved in labeling have a limited impact on whether or not um, someone commits suicide he's also been criticized for inconsistency of uh, his criticism of official statistics so on one hand he's criticizing um, that these are very much down to opinion and some of them aren't reported etc but on the other hand he's also saying that we can actually find out reasons why people commit suicide but to do this we need to have statistics which highlight that suicide has been committed for us then to investigate how else would we know if it was actual suicide or not this leads us on to another type of uh, interpretivist uh, view of suicide and ethnomethodology and this is the idea that um, social reality is a construct of its members and we um, create reality using co our common sense and our knowledge of things around us and we um, sociologists need to uncover this knowledge to make sense of the world within people with people living um, so if we understand how society is constructed by its members then we can understand why certain people would commit suicide in a certain way now Atkinson is um, very much the father and, and leader of ethnomethodology and to a certain extent he accepts Douglas' view that um, suicide is a label and um, it is interpretable and people will um, you know, label suicide and where it might not necessarily be suicide. But then he rejects the idea of... Um, that we can ascertain real meanings and real understanding of um, why someone will commit suicide, um, mainly because it's impossible, because we can't actually interview, we can't get information from the people who've committed suicide. Yes, death notes and, and things like that might be taken into consideration, but um, it's very rare that a suicide, you know, they will leave um, like suicidal notes um, for, for people to read. So, ask the questions of how do we actually um, categorise death as suicide. Well, Atkinson believes that um, all we can actually do then is understand how society classifies a, a death and a suicide um, rather than actually understanding the meanings behind it. <laughs>
Parkinson found um, that commoners used a very much common sense approach to um, deciding on whether or not uh, a death was suicidal, and they used evidence wherever possible. So suicide note being, you know, key uh, primary source of evidence there. Um, also the mode of death, so how they actually died, what, what happened if it was gunshot, if it was strangulation, uh, drowning, things like that. The location and circumstances taken into consideration and uh, the example that's given is that someone with a gunshot wound to the head who's in the middle of a forest on their own, there's a good chance that that was suicide. Um, however, uh, you know, someone who discharges their, their gun um, in their face and kills themselves on a shooting range might be seen as an accident. Um, life history is also taken into consideration, so whether or not the person had mental health issues or previous attempts of killing, killing themselves or even things that have happened in their lives quite recent um, to the actual event. So they use this idea of a typical suicide to help interpret um, whether suicide has happened or not. So they will have an idea about an ideal norm of, of what a suicide involves and what it looks like. And this um, believes that um, Atkinson actually is highlighting his own flaw. Um, so if you label a suicide as interpretation, then his own views are interpretations also. So should we just accept what Atkinson is saying, similar to um, Douglas, a very similar criticism to, to that of Douglas, that it's all interpretation, um, should we believe him uh, above coroners? Steve Taylor um, looks at it from a, a realist approach and the, although it is different to positivist and interpretivist, there are some similarities and some agreements there. So it does agree that statistical issues are raised by interpretivists and that we you know it's difficult to actually trust statistics because they're not always recorded and not always accurate. Um, an example that is here on the slide obviously is that thirty two people hit by tube trains, half are recorded as suicide, but there's no conclusive evidence that there were any suicides, uh, you know, there's no um, suicide note, um, you know, history of mental illness or anything like that. Um, however, similar to interpretivist, he does say that we can't actually explain suicide, but the way that a realist approach would look at it is un looking at the underlying structures and causes um, that might not necessarily be visible on the outside, but manifest themselves in the vis physical act of actual um, suicide. In defining suicide, Taylor believes that many of the people who actually kill themselves aren't aware that their actions are going to do that. Uh, so it kind of goes against what Durkheim was saying last week. For some, it's a call for help and a communication to the outside world that not everything's all right and that um, you know they need help. Uh, he believes that situations leading to suicide are, are fourfold, and there's four reasons um, and four types of suicide. Um, the Self-directed ones, the ectopic, um, could be looked at as a, a psychological state, so a feeling of how um, they are thinking. And the other directed, so uh, is more of a, um, a, you know, a reason for living or a, um, being overwhelmed by a situation. Um, so that leaves uh, that leads to submissive, which is we're very much aware of the results and we are certain about ourselves. We are certain that we are unhappy in life, and we know that we want to kill ourselves, and we we, we go through with that. Uh, thanatation is where we are a bit uncertain about it, we're uncertain about ourselves and also uncertain about the act of suicide as well. So we may, it may be more of a cry for help. Um, the sacrifice side is um, where you have to kill yourself, so you might be killing yourself uh, for another person, you might be communicating something, so this could be, um, as we discussed this week, um, you know, um, Buddhists uh, burning themselves uh, and things like that. And then there could be an appeal where we are very uncertain about um, ourselves and also how others view us and we want to change other people's views towards us um, through sympathy, for instance, and um, we um, very communicate to them through an attempted suicide, but we aren't certain that actually what's going to happen is we are going to kill ourselves. So an evaluation of that is that um, it makes uh, very much uh, a lot of assumptions again. So interpretation uh, for reasons for those that succeed, it's going to be very difficult to actually um, know 
exactly what it is that they were trying to do at the time, especially if they're dead. Um, we can't send out postal surveys to these people to find out um, why they tried to kill themselves or interview them in any way whatsoever. Surely there's got to be more than one motive for different people. There might be more than one motive for one person, um, but we can't really categorise society as a whole as um, killing themselves for the same reason. Small samples aren't necessarily representative, so when we look at these, it can be a very small sample because of the low rate of suicides compared to other deaths. And but I suppose Taylor does look at you know similarity, so he's got the certainty and uncertainty, the integration and um, the, the non-integration, egotistic side, etc. And it does link in with Durkheim in, in some way, but uh, also criticising that Durkheim is very much um, structured and there is a, a example of, of why people kill themselves. That's it for this week. Um, sorry about it's so late going on to the blog. I had major issues. I'm currently doing this uh, in my kitchen next to the fridge. You might have heard it. Uh, I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.